builds right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want this on a page I manage, pasta in public library. I think we're almost in business. It's preparing, so. Okay. <laughs> the nice thing is I didn't have to go looking it up. It does it for me. And then we'll stay on after. I'll end the Facebook Live, and then I can say goodbye to you guys after we're done with that, if you like. Okay, sounds good. You're aiming for what? How long are you aiming? Just within the hour. I feel okay. six thirty to seven thirty. Yeah. We should be. Oh, yeah. yeah, I yeah, I don't think <laughs> we have that much to say. What's that? I don't think we have that much to say. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, hey, you know, when when you start talking about something that you love, it's easy yeah. just to kind of have a conversation about it, and it seems pretty exciting. And if we get done sooner, we get sooner. Whatever feels natural too. But yeah, okay. we'll go over that for sure. We are good. Right. Oh, here we are. Go live. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. It's been a while. <laughs> so. <laughs> button on my screen says we're live on Facebook. Does it say it? Mm-hmm. It says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Well, great. So I know that I've, uh, <laughs> I, um, I hope it's true. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that message went away, but. <laughs> well, we have it now, so I think that we're okay. Okay. So, welcome Rose and David to our uh, conversation about the second edition of your book, Kids on the Trail, Hiking with Children in the Adirondacks. And this has been sort of exciting for me. I know that, uh, you know, I have known you guys for a while now and, and was really just introduced to the edition of this book, uh, introduced to the book through this second edition. Um, and so I will let the two of you take it away and just talk to us a little bit about um, the book itself and then the timing in the decision to release a second edition. Okay. Well, the first edition. This is the second. Oh, I guess it goes backwards there. Oh. <laughs> the first edition came out, was published in 1997, and it had taken you know, a couple of years' work to get to, to that point, as it, you would guess it probably would. And that's been a long time ago. So it was, I think we enjoyed doing that first edition way back when, and had actually been trying to get uh, a new edition in the works for some time and it just hadn't happened. And finally, uh, our publisher, Adirondack Mountain Club, was ready and they said, let's go. And so we started a couple of years ago, I no, guess. No, last fall, last summer. Well, or at the beginning of last summer. We, we, right. were, we, had, we had to do a little prepare. And the wording was over the winter. It was the summer, the summer before this summer, summer of 2019 was when we did most of the work. Yes. Yes. Yes, because the summer <laughs> came out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. The first edition was something we, um, we weren't sure we wanted to do. We were approached by 
an editor at ADK and they, she, she knew of us and knew we had small children to our two, um, Albert then nine and Will then seven and asked if we would do it. And I was a full-time teacher. David was a full-time working at Crumb Library. And we're like, with what time? I don't think so. Um, I don't, we said no. And I, and she just told us recently that she was so disappointed when we said no, because we didn't even, I mean, we didn't think anything of it. But then before we, we thought about it, we talked about it in the following days and said, you know, maybe this would be a fun project. You know, we want to hike anyways. Why don't we go explore the rest of the park? Why don't we do this? We've hiked with our boys. Let's see if we can tackle this. So we called her back and said, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> if we had known how much work it was going to be, maybe we wouldn't have said that. But it was really, um, like you had asked us in one of our, in one of your questions, William, it, it was a labor of love, but it was an easy labor. I mean, we really, we love the, the, the field work was fun. I mean, we had a whole spring, summer, fall with our boys hiking 60 some hikes throughout the park. Normally we would tend to stay home in our own backyard, um, you know, within the Adirondacks that we know within an, you know, an hour and a half drive, but we explored parts of the park that we never hiked in. Yeah, it was clear that we had to represent the entire Adirondack Park in the book, <laughs> not just the part that we were already familiar with. Right. So we were pushed a little bit to get out into the, the, the corners that are a little further away, which was, that, that was the hardest part of it from my point of view, because I had more time on the road, which I don't really enjoy. But, uh, but we got out there mm -hmm. and we discovered parts that are really beautiful, new, yeah, beautiful, oh, new, awesome. new to us, and it, and it was cool in the end. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to, Ask question. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I, I, I um, so uh, you know, it seems like from you know looking through even in the introduction alone. I mean, I skimmed, I read through the com complete opening of the book, uh, and then started going through the different aspects of the trails that you had to offer, uh, and really what kind of, um, you know, not just the trails themselves, but the surrounding areas, and if you have children, the things that you can see. So it really seems like there's a lot of like time. Uh, love, devotion, and personal experience that obviously went into this book. You know, is this something that you guys would refer to as like a labor of love? Because there's obviously a lot of work that went into it. It's laborious, but you know, and you know, laborious, but you know, there was clearly love there. I, I think when we were trying to imagine and present to our publishers what this book might look like, it, I think Dave and I both knew one part of it would be the hikes, the trail descriptions, the nitty gritty. But we also wanted with those, um, a lot of anecdotal accounts, like how that particular hike was made, was special to our family. And so that's reflected at, uh, um, throughout the book. So not only do you have the descriptions of the hikes, but maybe afterwards there's a little italicized anecdote about the, and it, something that happened with a particular friend on that hike or something that can be learned um, with, that we learned with that hike. But the other part of it was, I think the first part of the book was really important to us. And I think David, um, more than me in this part, did a lot of research um, onto what other people wrote about hiking with children, um, not only the hows, but the, but the whys. And so we have some quotes interspersed in that first part. And so we really wanted to, to have this book be a book of encouragement to parents, um, a book of um, that you can do this to, to parents, that you don't have to um, give up something you love because you have children. You can just make, you have to maybe redefine how you hike, um, what you get out of the hike for a while, but you don't have to not hike because children entered your life, right? right? I mean, David and I, we were never crazy hikers, but we liked to hike. And, and I guess this summer, the season of writing the book was a crazy hiking season with our boys. But we, we don't hike all the time, but we, um, we enjoy the trails. We seek out an, a, a natural place to be. And I think at the beginning of the book also talks about it doesn't have to always be a trail. Just bring children to the wonder of the natural world. And it's Oh, something worth yeah, doing. Yeah, and neither of us were kids on the trail when we were young. No. <laughs> neither my family nor Rose's were into hiking really at all. Uh, I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, and um, my mom's, my mother's family had a had a hunting camp up up in the woods, which we would go to as kids, and we liked going there. But we didn't hike; we just hung around and played in the woods, and and just 
uh, enjoyed being outside, but there wasn't any any destinations or hikes or anything like that that were involved. So I think I probably did my first real hike when I was a sophomore in college or something, you know. So it was I was not I was not a young hiker, but uh, I love it now and. And I, I think it's it's good for kids to have that experience when they're younger and but it doesn't but not mean essential. You, right, right, exactly. Not essential. It doesn't mean you can't come to loving the trail and what the natural world offers you even as an adult. And and many adults, even though the book is called Kids on the Trail, we've had many adults tell us how they appreciate the guide just for them to, you know, they're not going to want, they don't want to hike the high peaks. They don't want to hike hours, hours on end. They just want modest hikes that they can feel uh, um, that they can accomplish. And so this book is a good guide for any um, either beginning hiker or just a hiker who is happy with a, you know, a shorter, a mile long trail to a five mile trail. Yeah, we actually joke that the title should be kids and grandparents on the trail because those that's the other demographic group that we we often hear from who appreciate the book <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so you so you and i had asked right like i was wondering if if the two of you had been kids on the trail and being that you that you hadn't been um at what point did you find yourself you know getting out you talked about being a sophomore in college getting out on the, on the trails and, and and experiencing this david but at what point did you think that you know, this book was a good idea that, you know, like not having grown up on trails and then obviously having kids. I mean, people go out, I've, you know, I've, I've had children in my life, nieces, nephews, friends with kids where we go out, we go hiking, but never did I find myself in a place to go, you know what, I need to put some time in and write a book about this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously there's been some thought that had gone into right. together. You know, maybe William, part of not having been kids on the trail ourselves, um, I think we valued it for our own children and we were learning about what being a kid on the trail is like with our kids, right? I mean, if you grow up being a kid on the trail, you can maybe remember what those, hi those hikes meant to you, being out in the woods meant to you, um, you know, what you learned from them, maybe. But for us, we learned it and then shared it with our own children. And so maybe we felt like, let's just share why we think, you know, seeing how it impacted our children in ways that we weren't impacted by nature. Maybe you were with your honey camps. I mean, I wasn't, my sense of nature and the appreciation of the natural world yeah. really came later for me. Um, the value it has, the importance it has, and why it's so important that if you don't value it now, you're not going to work to preserve it. And we wanted to instill that in our children at a younger age. Now, um, so we, we had also talked about um, the impact hiking has had on, because your children are now, now grown. Yes. And you know, while you say you should have named it kids and grandparents on the trail, you're now also we grandparents on the trail. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about this. Obviously, um, your sons aren't here with us, but you, know, you had put something in, if you would read uh, from the book, how this impacted in your kids' words, uh, for the book, how, how this impacted them in, watching them grow up on the trails with you, and then now as adults, how, how this Yeah, so one of the things, um, as we were thinking about what we want to say in the preface to this edition of the book, um, is I asked each of, I asked Albert and I asked Will, um, would you guys mind writing a little something just to, that we might, that I could include in the preface that just maybe how that whole experience impacted you, if you want. And, you know, sometimes as parents, you just don't know the impact you make. So it was really special yeah. to get these from us. So I'll read Albert's and, and David could read, read Will's because I think to me, this is the most special part of the whole book. Um, <laughs> so th this is from she's, Albert. She's not impartial. <laughs> these are my kids, right. <laughs> I grew up as a kid on the trail. I don't remember the names of the trails or of most of the many, of the many mountains. What mattered was the crossing of a stream, its startling coolness on a hot day, the scramble toward the top, the anticipation of a view, the satisfaction that lunch was well earned and dinner would be too. The journey from avoiding mud to accepting that dirty legs too were part of the prize. What mattered was the looking, the showing. This is a balsam fir. You can pop the sticky bubbles on its bark. This is a touch me not. You can spring its bulging seed pods. This is a blueberry. This is not. This is an eft and another one and another one. 
For the past 10 years, I've lived in cities. The Adirondacks feel far away, and without a car, they are. But a childhood of hiking stays with you, no matter where you end up. I find an unexpected trail in the woods by my apartment in DC, pinch the touch-me-nots in Central Park, discovered wild blueberries near the Hudson. When I'd fly home from Boston, peering out the window of the nine-passenger Cessna at the Adirondacks below, I could see myself there, standing on that mountaintop, standing by that lake. And when I finally am there again, when I finally get out for a hike, my, my feet feel at home, hopping off roots and rocks like I'm a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Will's. Okay, so that was our older son. Our, our younger son, Will, says, my upbringing as a, quote, kid on the trail made me who I am. Being surrounded at an early age by the organic shapes and landscapes that make up the Adirondacks laid a foundation in my mind of how things should fit together. As I became a teenager on the trail, I traveled back on my own to conquer new heights and achieve new views of the park. The sense of adventure that comes with, sh with starting up a new trail has translated into my life as an adult. I'm always looking for a new path to explore and a way to get a new view of the world. This desire to experience the world led me to live in Central America for two years and to travel by bicycle across the country twice. With this new perspective, I have decided to put down roots in Potsdam, the town where I was born just outside the Adirondack Park. I am now able to explore with my own baby on the trail. I love to see the wonder in her eyes as she sees something new. I will cherish the times she gets to be in nature and I know that the more she experiences, the more robust her understanding of the world will be. I hope to see some of you dear readers on the trail and we can share a view or even some snacks. <laughs> That's great. Um, you know, so, you know, you're seeing the, see, you're obviously getting to now see it through the eyes of, um, you know, your kids and obviously Will with, with, you know, with, you know, you know he and Sarah's daughter and, you know, you go all going out together and getting that and, and perspective, I think was uh, a big part of uh, what you talk about throughout the book, you know, going hiking and really, I think um, a lot of us uh, as adults, when we go hiking, we don't really necessarily always um, notice the things that maybe kids would notice. Um, so, you know, one of the questions that I had and thinking about reading this was like, you know, so hiking with children can also give us adults new or revisited perspectives from our youth uh, that you write. And uh, the quote that you use here is, uh, their questions about the natural world challenge us to explain things in ways they will understand and so bring us to see things we have missed while hiking at an adult pace with adult eyes. Uh, so that also seems to be in step with um, something that you stress called like low key hiking, because you know it's something that doesn't last you know forever. You know this is you know these moments, these low key moments um, that you learned various new things hiking with the boys and now hiking with your uh, with your granddaughter. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that kind of you know some of the things that you picked up along the way hiking with children and things that you saw that you know maybe you wouldn't have and and the benefits of maybe having children in that way on, on the trail i think with our first book we had the advantage of having children on all the trails with us when we did this you know second edition we did, alice was still too young she was just born when we started the research on it and um you know we just went back and rehiked without kids but we knew how to look at the trail so when we hiked the first time with our own children we could tell right away if a trail was going to be in the book or not <laughs> because mm -hmm. you know it had to be interesting enough to hold their attention um a view at the top always helps a stream along the way always helps big boulders to climb is always a good thing. Um, it can't be too hard, too arduous, I mean, or, or too long an entry point to get to the interesting part, right? right? Um, uh, some places had like a pond afterwards where that you could jump into. Um, some had blueberries, some, like, I think our boys, they were kind of like the, um, what do you call it, the stamp of approval on a hike, if it was a hike worth having in our book. Yeah. And it was because we were hiking with them and taking the experience through their eyes. Yeah, but the other good thing about having them along is uh, when they're, especially when they are quite a bit smaller, it's you, you go slower because mm -hmm. they just can't hike at the speed. 
And what you discover is there's really more stuff to see than you realize because going slow, you tend to notice other things and, and their eyes will spot things that, that you didn't. And so uh, it's, it's, it's an enriching experience right. to be with them out there on the trail. Then when they get a little bit older, um, <laughs> it's almost the opposite problem. They're going faster than you want to go, but that's another, right. that's another issue. We, we as adults tend to be goal oriented. And I think the kids are more moment oriented. Like yeah. they want to have fun in that moment. So, um, so we found tricks, tricks around those things too, yeah. or they did themselves. Like we make made up games. Um, you know, we tried to keep, of course, 23 years ago, phones and technology were not so much of an issue that you had to deal with. Um, so whenever we left our car or our house and then our car to go to on a hike, it was basically a no technology zone because we didn't have any. Yeah. Um, these days, it would be a little bit more because those phones work. You get cell reception a lot of the ways, at least on the tops. And so... I can count on it, but you get it on most of the trails. A lot of times. And, but there's a nice side because then they can send grandma the picture of, you know, them on the mountaintop or, um, you know, have a, 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 they can actually be part of taking the picture. But you have to balance that with um, keeping them in the moment of the hike. But I don't think that's hard to do um, if, if you approach it that that's what, what it is. You know, we were lucky we had kids who wanted to hike. You know, I, I don't think it's something you can force on a child. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, I think that you, in, and you actually mentioned this throughout the book where you can get them out on the trail and, and take them along for the journey, but because they're children, a lot of times, you know, they could be temperamental, they may not have the, the energy to go for the length of the trail. And so you talk about uh, other things outside of the natural world surrounding communities, um, shops, yeah. uh, villages, and things like that. Uh, how much of a role did that play? So, you know, going out and, and getting your kids into the, into the wild, but then saying like, luckily you're also gonna have these other opportunities outside of just going for a hike, especially because if you gotta go to the Adirondacks, it could be an hour drive down to Wanakina, for example. Right. Uh, you know, going out to a Tupper Lake, it could take a little while. So there's got to be other things right aside from the walk. Well, food, there was always, always, there was always food. <laughs> right. You know, they know they're going to get a, a good meal afterwards, probably on the way home or, or some, ice some, cream somewhere on along the way. The way. Yeah. So, um, right. And we did have friends that we uh, visited. We had friends down near Saratoga that we would, we would see. Uh, so that happened sometimes. Um, and it's also if you're if you're gonna sure. you know to do an adventure and go to like to reach like the Lake George area the the um the southern Adirondacks could be a couple hours in the car or three hours in the car we didn't go and just do a mile hike after all that driving I mean you would tie it into a reason to explore that area maybe to spend a night or two or mm -hmm. camp a night or two or you have fa friends or family who are in the area and then you you make it a trip or you know we're gonna go to park uh, what the water park in Lake George um, mm -hmm. area. I mean, water you, parks in Little Forge. The, yeah, that's right. The <laughs> other one, a safari, the Greek, whatever that one is called. Um, so, so you do find other things, that, but but the but the hike is just or being in the natural world is just a part of it. You know, families know how to vacation together, how to have fun together. I mean, you know your family, and you. Yeah, well, you have rewards, you have incentives, you have, you know, little treats that you give yourself for working hard. And, and you know, you talk about um, some of the other folks that you engaged in putting this together. This wasn't just like uh, you went out on the trails with your kids and have uh, garnered all this information on your own. You talked about uh, speaking with other hikers for information, friends, strangers. Uh, can you tell us about some of those encounters, what it was like to gather this information, not just through your own personal experiences, but through talking with other people and how those folks helped you in shaping this book? Well, I think a lot of our information um, at the beginning came from the wonderful series the Adirondack Mountain Club puts together. Um, guidebook their, their main guidebook series yeah. of each of the four, well, it used to be, I think, six regions. Now it's four regions of the park. And um, those guidebooks are excellent. Um, they're meant for adults. But we, um, we started with those and the hikes we've already done. And we went through those guidebooks and started to pick through, hmm, this one sounds interesting, this one sounds interesting. We had people who recommended hikes to us. Um, 
when we went down and stayed with some friends in um, the more farther um, areas of the park when we knew we'd be staying a few days, they would say, here's what, this is the place we always take our friends and we would, we would go check it out. So there was a lot of word yeah. of mouth, um, but a lot of it was just the research that's already been done there by the Adirondack Mountain Club and, um, and other guidebooks at the time too that we took a look mm -hmm. at yeah. um, to guide us to say, these are the hikes we're going to try out and then we go and do them and then make a decision and then our our editor also would send these out um our descriptions and our our selections out to the people who had worked on those other guidebooks for their input to see if they had anything that they wanted to add or that they felt or, or a place <laughs> things we, that we, we got missed. wrong <laughs> yeah or things that right because you want because as soon as you print the book something will change you know that's just the nature of trails they don't they're not constant. That's one of the reasons that this book has 40 new trails that the other book didn't have. I mean, we om omitted some in the, from the first book, um, some that were in the more crowded parts of the park, mm -hmm. some that were um, just no longer in good, good right. repair, um, some new trails that weren't even in existence. Right. I mean, new trails are being created. It's not, not a great number, but Every every year, a couple of new trails get put in, and some sometimes they're they're really good. And oftentimes, the trail itself is a lot better than the old trails. The old trails in the Adirondacks tended to go straight up the mountain, mm -hmm. and uh, they 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 got eroded and and their roots, and they were they were they were difficult to climb. And there's a lot better understanding of how to build a good trail these days. So mm -hmm. the new trails are often. Um, they take a a, 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 a more a gentler approach to the mountain. They look for interesting things along the way rather than just see how fast we can make it to the top. Yeah. So, right. so the, some of those new trails are in our, are, are in the new book. And I think they're among the nice. Types. The other resource we had for this book that wasn't so much then is we had the internet and there are so many um, great <laughs> organizations that work to preserve public land and wild lands like the, the Lake George um, na uh, Lake, Land Trust. Lake George Land Trust. Land Trust is wonderful. The, the CATS, the Champlain Area Trail System mm -hmm. for uh, the, the, the eastern part of the Adirondacks over near the Champlain, Lake Champlain. Mm -hmm. They have some great trails and they have a nice little um, set of guides for that. Yeah, yeah, there are lots of those organizations now. I love to see those organizations mm -hmm. doing well and being active. Right. You know, and obviously with so many of those organizations, um, you know, advocating for the safety and maintaining of the Adirondacks. I mean, there's always, we talk about the, um, the threats to wilderness in general that we face, you know, every day and it continues to happen. Uh, one of the things that you emphasized in here was that um, aside from being a kid-friendly guidebook, that it expresses the importance of getting young people into the wilderness in hopes that they uh, you know, would want to carry on the effort to preserve what remains of our wilderness and, and you know, you know, when they become adults. Uh, obviously, listening to you know, Will's testimony as well as his Al Albert's testimony, you, know, you hear that they have that in there. So you know, 22 years later with this new second edition, how, you know, how is that application shaped your own children's views and then like and then maybe like i mean obviously you know for example here in the comments section we did get a comment from uh gretchen kohler uh and she says that this book or the first edition of the book was the most wonderful gift to ourselves and our young boys now our grown boys are uh, are avid hikers our youngest just hiked 40 miles with his friends this <laughs> such a wonderful impact on us an incredible and beloved resource we dated and took notes after each hike and now love revisiting those trails and thinking back on the special time. Thank you, Rose, David, Albert, and Willie. Thank you, Greg. So obviously this kind of thing has had an impact, you know, on, on a community uh, and a broader than that, I mean, bigger than a community life. So I just thought of something. Well, actually, um, a great resource we had for this edition was we have a kid's challenge that goes with the book. So, and it started with the first edition. And in the first edition, it was organized differently. It was organized into eight regions. And we set up a challenge. Our, our local Laurentian chapter set up a challenge. The that, Adirond yeah, our, our Adirondack Mountain Club chapter. Yeah. Right. The, um, that if it, uh, uh, children did um, uh, two hikes in each of the eight regions, so 16 hikes, so it brought them to all the parts of the park, they could earn a patch, uh, kids on the trail, 
patch, which I have one right here. One, I have one here, like a little patch. That was actually a, a drawing Albert did for me for a Mother's Day, probably when he was five years old. That when um, we were designing the patch, it was still taped to our bedroom door. And I said, that's the patch. And um, so it became the patch. Um, but we, um, so when people, we've had over 200 children now complete that challenge. And um, when they submit their form into us, often there are comments on there. And there are comments either about, you know, the cool thing they did on the trail or um, something that maybe made the, the hike less yeah. than perfect. Like, you know, we should check this trail out because they did not have a, you know, the trail was eroded or they couldn't find the markers. Or the bugs were incredibly bad or whatever, you know. Right. But, so we had a lot of those comments <laughs> so that also we could draw from to help us decide and um, revise maybe some of the trails that we included in this book. And so that challenge is still on, but now it's four hikes in each of the four sections in this book, because we aligned our sections with the ADK um, guidebook, guidebook series. series. So, um, so we get a lot of feedback from that, which is wonderful. And that's, so we get stories like Gretchen just shared, and it's wonderful some of the letters we get from, mm -hmm. from parents who, um, you know, I, I think we're like us. They're appreciative that they had something that pushed them to discover other parts of the park, even though you live in a, you know, it's not that huge, but it pushed them to other places of the park that they norm maybe wouldn't have gone. Um, those letters are very rewarding, those notes that we often get. Yeah. You know, you talk about um, hearing, the, like using the word challenge, right? Here are the different challenges for each child. You know, you put it, uh, and for the families, and you put it obviously in the back of the book. For, so like you know, Gretchen was saying, you can date them and have these memories. Um, you know, you do talk about how the hikes will be different for each child. So, you know, if you're doing cathedral rock versus, um, you know, say, uh, Mount Arab, and you're doing these different fire towers and looking at, you know, some of the shorter and longer trails. Um, so when you're looking at the book and looking at these trails and how they differ for each child, it's um, as, you know, obviously they bring different skills and challenges to the adventure. Uh, how did you determine what would be like good hiking lengths? Because, you know, when you start getting into looking at the various hikes, you talk about the, the length of hike, the elevation, um, some of the features that you would appeal to children. So, you know, how do you make those kinds of determinations and kind of like based, you know, obviously having your own children, but you know, what would be ideal for, for children in general and what those looking at those challenges and then, you know, how great a role did your own children play in reaching those determinations? Uh, while you were asking the question, I was thinking about, um, for instance, the first hike where the kids had their own little backpacks and we were going to do an overnight and they got to carry their own sleeping bag and their own little change of clothes and i remember how excited they were about that because that was a big step up because we were always carrying all the gear if we were doing some overnight and and, and i think you know overnights were, were fun we did a number of them but mostly they were really short like going down to um What's that pond by Blue Mountain Lake? Um, rock Lake. Rock, rock Pond? Rock Lake? Rock, rock Lake. lake. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, there's a nice little campsite right on the lake, and it's about a quarter of a mile hike. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, an, it's an easy, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but not much. It's a really short hike. And yet you can get there. It's a beautiful spot. And we camped overnight there. And, uh, and Well, part of it was our own experience. It's like I remember the first hike Albert did. He was three years old and we hiked Hadley Mountain. We were with friends who had older children. And it was the first hike I remember that he was mm. totally not in the backpack mm. as we were hiking. Because I mean, obviously we hiked with the boys before we wrote the first edition. So we, we were hiking with them since they were babies because David and I liked hiking. And so we made the yeah. decision, we're not gonna not hike. We just got the backpack, we got the, the equipment, we brought them with us from when they were you know, that they could go in the backpack. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did learn with them, you know, what is too long, what's too far, what's too much, um, what motivates them. Um, and so we do um, 
uh, rate our hikes or we have little symbols for right. like a one, two, three type scale. And then there's a little separate symbol that this might be a, a possible first camping adventure or a possible camping um, opportunity for your, with your children. Um, and so that's kind of a guide. And what determines that is elevation. If there's a lot of elevation gain, it's not gonna be a one, it'll probably be a two or a three if there's quite a bit. How long, mostly threes are that they have elevation gain and they're longer on the, you know, maybe three miles each way, you know, so it might be a, five, a four to six mile round trip, which is more of a challenge. Um, and, and some hikes you can't camp. I mean, there's no, there's no campsites, there's no lean-tos. Or, I'm sure a lot of them that aren't. Yeah, there's a lot of places yeah. where, where camping is not allowed, but, you know, we also threw in a, a number of hikes where they could be a good first camping outing or something mm -hmm. like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, and if that seemed to be appropriate. I remember the, one of the earliest times we took Albert with us, it was in the winter time, so we were skiing, not hiking, uh, cross-country skiing into Osceola Lake, and Albert was, mm. what, six was, months? Yeah, seven mm -hmm. or eight months. Yeah, was, he was in, my, in the backpack behind me, and we skied in, and it started to snow quite heavily as we were <laughs> skiing mm -hmm. out, and uh, the snow was, you know, smacking him right in the face, and uh, uh, he wasn't real happy at that point. Uh, I was worried that, oh boy, he's never going to want to go with us again. Just, this mm -hmm. is, this is the end. As at six months, we, 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 we burnt this as a, as an, as a, as six a months potential old. project. Don't remember and, much. And he, yeah, he, he, <laughs> forgot, he forgot that, that experience, fortunately. And he was happy to go hiking with us the very mm -hmm. next summer. So. You know, one thing we haven't <laughs> talked about at all is, is safety. And, um, you know, we do encourage parents to, um, to enjoy the trail, but not to be afraid. Don't become so goal oriented that you put yourselves or um, right. your children at risk. Like we have turned back on hikes. You know, we realize, oh, we are running out of time to, and we don't have flashlights. We're not going to you know, make it out before dark. Yeah. We're going to turn around now, or we just obviously the mood of the children. We don't have the energy. We're just not going to do this today. We're going to come back. Uh, it's not to be afraid to say, you know, it's just not the right day for this hike. And we're pretty fair weather hikers too. I mean, we like a nice sunny day for a, for a hike. Right. We're not going to take them out when it's when they're going to be miserable and wet and too cold. Um, except that one ski. <laughs> We learned. Uh, that was that was one of our very first ones. So, yeah. We learned. <laughs> yeah, I um, you know, I've, I've you know seen that where you know you go out on on, on a trip and, and you suddenly find yourself going, oh wait, you know, you're gonna even as an adult, I've gone on on hikes where I've I've been out three miles for a five mile trip and I realize I still have you know some space to go and the sun is getting low quick and mm -hmm. you, know, you make the right decision is even by yourself to turn back. Right. Um, and Brooke Rouse was just uh, chiming in and she said she was just um, just joining so she may have missed this but she wanted to ask when you were doing the second edition did you rehike all of the trails again uh, from your first book or I mean how did you explore you know the trails that you had previously had and making the determination to keep them or to omit them and while adding new trails as well we did rehike some of them especially if we knew that there had been some changes that we hadn't hadn't uh, seen firsthand ourselves. Um, I'm thinking specifically, for instance, of Catamount over by uh, north of of um, Whiteface Mountain, which was one of our favorite hikes. But the whole uh, there was a brand new parking area. The trail uh, the start of the trail was in a different place, and so when when there was enough like things like that we rehiked it mm -hmm. but we we didn't rehike every one of them if mm -hmm. we had good reason to think things were pretty much the same um we could check with people who maybe have had a more recent experience on the trail and ask them so is it still like we describe and they would maybe say yeah it's that's that's right. that's pretty accurate still right so. we wouldn't have had the time to do all you know all 70 71 hikes we did a good number of them some of the newer ones we put in because there are hikes that we had done between the first book and the second book and had in the back of our minds this would be a great hike for yeah, we had the been next keeping book. kind of a log of, of uh, other hikes because we'd always wanted all along to do a new edition so we we had a, an accumulating uh, mm -hmm. list of other hikes right. and with little descriptions of any notes that we took on mm -hmm. yeah 
you know, one of the <clears throat> one of the things that um, I found fantastic about this book, and you know what I was reading through. A, I mean, I, I took it with me when I was skimming through it. I had gone hiking. Um, and I decided, so I was like, this is something that I, like I mentioned, this is not just for someone who has kids, this could be for anybody. I had this thing in my bag for, you know, a couple of different trips that I've taken where you're skimming through it and finding trails. Um, and I go on hikes and I do a lot of writing when I'm in the woods. And the thing that I liked about what you mentioned in, in the book is the importance of uh, storytelling. And mm-hmm. that storytelling is emphasized, you know, um, with having, and, and, and this was a quote you wrote, uh, you will also find that the stories you tell about your hikes increase their value and come to define the hike in the child's memory. So, you know, what stories of hikes do you feel you know, like did that for your children and yourselves? And then, you know, what stories do you still carry with you, you know, from, from all of these years of hiking together? And uh, in what ways do you see yourself uh, at your best in nature, uh, to paraphrase uh, Paul uh, Hetzler? as you (laughs) I'm going to say that one of the things because it just happened with Alice our granddaughter where we were just taking a little walk and the leaves were coming down and she wanted to try to catch one and I remember a hike we did with Albert and Willie and um they the leaves it was in the fall so the leaves were coming down the tree and they invented these games you know they're brothers they're two years apart everything was a game or a competition and so they you know the leaves were bombs and you had to catch them before they hit the ground and they would just try to see how many they could catch so it was just remembering those those stories and um you know, and sometimes I, I like when other people share them like we include one in our book we had done a hike with a friend of ours and her younger son, he was younger than our two boys. And he, I think he was upset because he wasn't the leader or something, or I, I'm not <laughs> sure what it was. And Kathy just shared the story of how at bath time that night, you know, she just wove the story around all the wonderful things that happened on that hike instead of that thing that he was upset about, <laughs> where it was, the, you know, he had picked up a frog and he was sharing that, you know, what that frog looked like with, with our, our sons. And then they, they, you know, they put it back and, and she just wove a story around the, a positive image of what happened. And so, yeah, it's like, remember that hike when, or, and now sometimes we'll redo a hike with them and they do remember some of the, mm. you know, the things that the game that they played or the thing that happened on that hike. Uh, one that I also remember is, um, I think it was Black Mountain. It was muddy. It was not a very good trail. And I remember, and I think this is where Albert mentions the mud, learning to love the mud. They got in their heads that they were going to be soldiers of the trail. And no matter what, they were going to walk down the middle, no matter how big the mud puddle or the stick or the rock that was in their way. Yeah. And they had a blast. There's, you know, they were mud covered. It was, it was the kind of day which could have been a miserable experience, right. but they but as kids, they knew how to, to sort of find a, right. find fun in it anyway. Mm-hmm. We still do the game of like... It always work that way. But. You know, predicting, it's a game. Who can predict, you know, how long it's going to take us to get to the to the end of the trail or back out? Like, who's the closest to the prediction? Or, you know, I don't know. They're just little routines, little fun things that your family did that that's just become those stories. And, and you know, it's... Um there was there was so much information in the beginning of this book right i mean never mind all of the information two of you put together for each of the individual trails but just everything from uh medical advice uh you know when you run into situations like we talk about you know how to know what the right trail is for your child and how to navigate the difficulties that because you know hiking with children uh you know can be difficult getting them to continue on uh, like you talked about, like the little energy pills that you talk about, like a little candy or things. Power pills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, power pills, right? So, I mean, it's, it's the, fant- the way you put these things together, it just, it seems like you pretty much <laughs> thought of everything for this. And I think we talked about this uh, previously before we were getting together and I laughed. You know, everything right down to advising children, they shouldn't throw stones off of cliffs for risk of not just like maybe hitting somebody below, but also hurling themselves off with said stones. <laughs> 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 I can tell you as an adult going onto some of the rock face um, tops of mountains and just looking over the side, you know, how intimidating that can be. So, uh, you know, how much research went into the book outside of your personal experience? Again, we look at some of this, like, including some of the medical advice on how to deal with things like um, if a child is faced with things such as hyperthermia or uh, frostbite, 
Um, and then how long did that research take and you know, what kinds of resources? I mean, we talked about some of the resources you used previously um, and how those altered from the first edition. I'd say the first edition, we, most of our research was done in that first edition, right? I mean, yeah. we spent a lot of time. So for that book, we hiked spring, summer, fall with the boys. And then were a few hikes we had included that we had done previously. But then that winter, that fall in the winter, maybe even into part of the spring oh, yeah, was sure. the writing of it. And we did, a, we did a lot of research about, um, you know, we read some other books of the, with people who had experiences hiking with children and we looked at what they included. And we just tried to think of like everything that you would want to think about when, you know, when I pack that backpack ready to go on a hike, what am I thinking about? Right. I'm thinking about possible change in weather. I'm thinking about the right, clothing for that weather. I'm thinking about where the energy is coming from, what water sources there will be. I'm thinking about the first aid kit. I'm thinking about what could go wrong. I'm thinking about having a map, having, you yeah. know. Well, I think that we, we realized that there might be a, parents who were really just intimidated. They were scared of the prospect mm -hmm. of being miles from, from, you know, the highway and, and any kind of help uh, with with their children and that they might lead that, that might lead them to decide, I'm, not, I'm just not gonna do this. I don't, I don't wanna take these kinds of risks. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just too scary a, pro, a prospect. And, you know, I think after the, the experience we had had of several years of hiking with kids before we even started to write the book, um, we could say some things that would alleviate these mm -hmm. concerns right. and that would give the, them some confidence that it's a doable thing and if you just take this and this and this and keep this and this in, uh, in mind and do this these basic preparations uh, you're very likely going to come out mm -hmm. without any problems and, and one of the first things is to encourage people to hike with with another family right. to hike to too. right and we often did right um when it makes it sometimes more enjoyable for the children if they have you know companions other than right. their siblings but also just um you know you have some someone who maybe is a little more experienced than you or hike um our local chapter of the adirondack mountain club the laurentian chapter often um sponsors hikes that sometimes are very you know a child friendly geared to children um and something an idea i have that I want to work with you, William, is actually a series of maybe some hikes next um, summer or fall. We did one a few years ago. Mm -hmm. where we had a series of hikes over a summer that were for ki for kids. We ended up getting a lot of grandparents on those hikes too, but they were, you know, we yeah. set them up for kids. They were fun. Yeah, yeah, so we could do something like that. But that also helps um, first-time hikers with children um, because they could be, you know, like us, that maybe they're new to hiking right. and so is their child and they would like to explore it together. So go with someone who's, who's already hiked because it, it just helps you. Yeah, I, I actually, and I would be very much um, in favor of doing some because I've, I've already started working with Blair Medor on doing um, history yeah. and nature hikes. We did one on the Red Sandstone Trail. Mm -hmm. I think it could be very kid friendly. We had some children along with us. Mm -hmm. you can See the reaction that some of the kids had that maybe had not had real experience excuse me out in in the wilderness um, right. excited about like seeing things like snakes we had um, a, a family that came and uh, the first day and then the second day we did sugar island and came along and um, I was I found garter snakes and you know I picked up a garter snake and had it on my hand and you know the kids were like interested in it and the adults were interested in it. are you gonna pick that snake so I mean just getting people out like that adults were be were very excited almost like the kids were uh, right. so doing stuff like that, I think, is a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. It's important, I think, that that kind of that benefit. Um, Brooke was asking, she said, you know, that they had a fun conversation uh, on their page uh, about ways to get kids interested in hiking when they are not at all interested <laughs> in hiking. Uh, and so she was asking for a few tips on how to get kids interested when they just don't seem like they want to go out there at all and you do. I think a big one is to bring along a friend. You know, if they have a buddy who um, they like being with and who maybe is more enthusiastic about being outside, that that, that makes a huge difference. Um, um, 
and and making it I don't know, we thought about like games or things that we could do along the way. Like some some hikes lend themselves to counting counting things. Like the the hike up um Goodno Mountain where there's a fire tower. Yeah. There are lots of benches along the way. So like, you know, can you can we count all the benches and we're gonna stop at the benches? Or you bring the power pills, or you have special treats that come out at special times. Um, you know, certainly praise. Um, um bringing along maybe not a real friend but a special stuffed animal friend or <laughs> whatever who can you know be part of that the experience um having them take the pictures um maybe along the way um but i think yeah i think having a friend along is one of the the most motivating things i would think to for a reluctant hiker i mean it's hard if kids just don't want to um then you use the gimmicks as a parent that you try to get them to do anything <laughs> you, yeah. you know you, you have that same bag of tricks well, what works for you is it a little bit of a bribe a compromise <laughs> you know um uh yeah whatever we just didn't have too much trouble right and you know if you have yeah. a couple of good first experiences that will set the that'll set the groundwork for success later on too because right remember that last hike that was so fun. Or, or maybe like, well, even let's do it again. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> even you know, is saying to them, just let's give it a try and see how far you want to go. You decide when we turn around. You know, maybe that's okay for the beginning. You know, just give us long. You know, let's just try it, or let's or pick something where there's something very rewarding. Like you're you're along a stream, so right away there's something um, interesting that they could um, enjoy, rather than having to wait till they got to the top. Or, or you know the end of the road kind of thing or the end of the trail and almost every hike has something along the way that's interesting in, in some way you know something we did i was going to say this earlier i i love this is i love doing this we had a great big map of the whole adirondacks that i think adk published and when we were first hiking with our boys every time we did a hike we had a colored pencil or a marker that we we went over the trail, talked about, you know, showed the distance, showed where the trail was. And then those, the color of that map, I mean, there are more and more and more lines that got highlighted and colored. And that was a great- um, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was a, a map for them to look forward to. And we also kept a list of all the hikes, you know, that they did. Um, the high peaks as well as the, as they got older or just the, um, um, the simpler hikes. And so sometimes that, I think, Brooke, it could be a motivator too. Having, you know, a listing, depending on the age of your child, you know, that shows that these are the ones that you've done, or this is the one where we went halfway, maybe next time we'll go, we'll make it to the top. So those are just some ideas. And they, uh, and they seem to be going over well, actually. <laughs> you know, Brooke seems pleased. She says, you know, she's fortunate to have uh, great little hikers too, and she loves the friend. Yeah, um, you know, it just always works out. Now, um, obviously, you, you talk about in, in the book, uh, you can't plan for every situation. Right. Um, so I was thinking about this as I was reading it, you know, the development of this second edition, uh, its publication or the schedule for its publication when everything was set and put in uh, was probably prior to the pandemic. Yes. So I'm wondering, you know, I, I have I have gone hiking a few times since. Um, one specific Saturday, uh, I went to Blue Mountain Lake and did, uh, it was Castle Rock. And it was pretty packed. I didn't expect it. I was, you know, a friend of mine was going to come up and go for a hike and, uh, and you know, you do the best to keep your distance. Uh, so I guess my question would be, what kind of advice would you have added to the book that would have offered, you know, hikers and, uh, and readers, you know, what to do in a time of pandemic when hiking and how to face these? Would there, you know, what kind of things would you have thought about to put into edition had you known that this were to be uh, an issue well i think i think that regardless irregardless regardless of covid or not um we purposely tried to take out some hikes that were over trails that were over hiked right like mount joe like pitch off like mm -hmm. some of those because there already was a, a problem in the adirondacks of some trails just being overused and there's so many wonderful trails so that's that's um something that was in the back of our mind but pertains now to covid too because you're going to seek out maybe trails that are not as popular or not as 
maybe popper is not the right word, but not as hyped, not yeah. as used. Yeah. Um, so you seek that out. Um, I know some people who have told me that they hike, you know, they try to hike midweek if they can, if they have that luxury of being able to go maybe when other people aren't going hiking. Right. Um, you know, certainly you'd carry your mask, but you know, you're outside, you're, um, you've got the air, you know, circulating yeah. all around you. I think if you're careful and cognizant of other people's space, um, which you try to be anyways, when you're hiking, I don't know how much more COVID impacts the hiking experience. It's, it's a rare Adirondack trail that is crowded to the point where it seems it would be a major concern. Usually you can separate, if you meet someone on the trail, you can, you can separate and pass quite safely. At the top, most, most peaks are spacious enough that there's, crowding is not a problem. Um, I, I mean, don't I know guess, what else we'd say. You know, one plus side yeah, of the pandemic. Wear your mask. <laughs> right. Even though it makes the trails more crowded, I mean, it's given people an opportunity to go outside and yeah. to think about outside spaces. And I know I want to give a lot of credit to Brooke and what she's done through the county chamber, um, you know, promoting the waterfall trails, promoting, you know, like I've seen her Facebook posts where you promote things that are just not that far away. And, and, you know, I don't know, it, like David said, it's, it's rare that it's going to be so crowded. And if it is, you know, there are several hikes in our book that, um, there's another hike not too far away. So if one is, you look at the parking area and it's like, whoa, there are 30 cars here. Uh, maybe let's go down the road and try something else. You had that own ex that experience yourself, William. You were saying, well, it was because a trail was closed. And so you found an alternative trail. Um, so sometimes that's, that's a possibility too. Yeah. And yeah, I would like to actually also say, it's like, you know, Brooke, um, thank you to Brooke Rouse and, and the County Chamber, because. Uh, yeah. I have, in fact, found like hiking trails and, and waterfall trails. They have a fantastic resource over there to find some of these locations. Uh, she says that, um, and, and she adds, you know, we, we hiked nearly every weekend since the shutdown. Uh, we tried to pick ones we had never done before. Uh, they're some of our new favorites. Um, in the situation, and this is also going back to the things you can't plan for, uh, you know, I happen to be going down to Wanakina uh, to visit some friends and, and also kind of prepare for some other events that I was working on. And I thought, you know, this would be a perfect opportunity to go and check out Cathedral Rock. And I've been down there so many times. I know the Rangers School, and I was like, this is great. I'm going to go hike this trail. And, um, and yet the, the property around the Rangers School was closed. Um, and so I thought, I was like, oh, man, this is too bad. This is, I, I thought I'd do a little promo for this talk for our web page, for our Facebook page, uh, from the top of the, the fire tower. And, you know, it's out of luck. But... Fortunately, uh, Auto's Abode, which is down the general store in our place right there in the middle, a friend of mine, Nolan, he is, uh, runs the shop and is very aware of a lot of the trails there. Uh, and he said right down the road, you know, I walked down the street to uh, this Moore Trail, M-O-O-R-E, and it's like two miles, pretty flat, all along the Oswagashi, absolutely beautiful. But I mean, there are options. In our next book. <laughs> is that right? So the third edition, which I'm sure you're working on now. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to see the more, uh, and, but you know, because you make it down and so I'm sure that people will look at trails and they might want to go out to them and go, uh Oh, I can't, you know, either it's overpopulated or closed down. It doesn't seem like there, are, you know, there are, seem to be options often nearby. Um, the last question I had for you, and then, you know, I, I kind of want to open it up to if, if there's anybody watching who hasn't had any questions or, uh, hasn't asked questions and have some, and, and just want to comment, feel free to do so in the comments section. Uh, and I'll relay them to Rose and David. Uh, and the last question I have for you is, you know, I mentioned like a pandemic, you can't always plan for every situation, but you do emphasize the importance of foresight uh, when hiking with children. So uh, in, in your case uh, with your boys and, you know, in, if without, with Alice, uh, how many times uh, did, you, did things not go as planned for you as hiking parents? Uh, before you were in a place where you had, you know, a solid, you know, had solid backup plans. So like, what advice would you give to new parents hiking with their children uh, when you go out and you have these expectations and then suddenly things don't go as planned? Well, I, I remember the time we wanted to uh, hike up Whiteface from uh, Whiteface Landing and it, whatever things happened and we just were later getting started than we had planned. 
And as we got to the lean-to where we were going to drop our gear and then we were going to climb up, we, we looked at the, the, the time and the amount of trail we still had to cover and we go, it's not going to happen. We can't. And the kids were really disappointed. <laughs> but uh, we just had to make that decision. And that was the right thing to do, for sure. We stayed at the lean-to. We had a nice, relaxed time there. We, you know, enjoyed ourselves in other ways. And uh, we didn't get to climb that mountain that day. We, we did climb my face later on. But... Yeah. I mean, I guess the thing to keep in mind that I'm thinking, you know, the hikes that are in this book, like some that are just a mile long, there's less time for things to go wrong <laughs> than when you're, you know, as you, as the kids become older or you, you as an adult start tackling, um, longer multi-day adventures, many more miles adventures, you're farther into the wilderness. But, you know, I, I guess I'm more the worrier in this family. So I was always thinking about the, I remember the boys getting so mad that I would, you know, have this backpack and, you know, I'd be putting in the raincoat and I'd be putting in some of the extra things and like, what are you doing? But, but then the satisfaction comes when we were, it wasn't in the Adirondacks. We were up in the Get, um, the Getz Bay Peninsula mm. and we were doing a hike and we decided to climb oh, yeah, yeah. Mount Albert. And um, the boys were teenagers at this point, but you know, I had my, my fleece and I had my rain jacket and they had their, th and it was probably, it was terrible decision to go out hiking anyways it was starting to rain and then it rained harder but i just remember we get but the nice thing in canada there there's a nice like warming hut at the top so we didn't know that and it was wonderful but on the way up there's like we saw like there was a little outhouse and we went in there just for a second and i remember taking off my dry fleece that was under my rain jacket and sharing it with my boys because i'm their mother and i'm going to try to keep them warm i was freezing the, was, david was, was freezing really we did not before. bring the right clothing but you know when you have an experience like that i mean i don't think we weren't in danger danger but it could have gone that way um if we didn't turn back but it was a great i told you so that i you know i was more prepared than you were <laughs> and remember that next time um, but also that you do, you learn from an experience what was, what could have been like, you know, you skin your knee and you didn't bring any bandages or, um, you know, anything to just make that a little, you know, easier experience, or you didn't bring enough water or we've had those, well, we've, we we've had run, those situations. We've run into people who were seriously, um, or in, even in trouble on the mountain for lack of water right. on a hot summer day. Right. Or you, or you don't bring enough food and you know, the kids run out of energy and steam. I mean, those things can, um, can all happen and you, and you learn from them. Um, what was the question? Did I answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to go. <laughs> no, well, you know, we joked about whether there'd be an hour's worth of material. Oh, no, and, I didn't uh, think so. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but you but you know when you get into talking about these types of things obviously it's um you know it's it's always exciting but the, no no i think the question was always um, that you couldn't plan right. for every situation you know what kind of situations have you what advice would you give uh for those times that you know unexpected Learn things happen uh, <laughs> right <laughs> brooke, brooke actually said she goes you know that they um that she and her family hiked high falls in malone this may uh she throws an ellipsis in there and adds we were not prepared for a <laughs> snow squall, <laughs> you know, and, and I think I remember that actually in May looking out the window and a friend of mine sent me a text message from her, you know, from her from her bedroom window looking out and the snow yeah. coming down and it's May. You're going like, you just, you, you're just not ready for those types of things. Uh, you know, we covered a lot of ground and, you know, a lot of the information that we talked about was based upon things that I got from reading the book. But I mean, for your you know, for yourselves, I mean, you're the ones who put all the work in, you know, what, what about for you? What, what was some of the, the highlights of putting this second edition together? Some of the things that stay with you, some of your favorite things, uh, the things that you just, you know, that really kind of excite you about say, this. I'm going to say the realization that so many things just don't change and while other things change. The trails might change, the signage might change, the, the rerouting of the trail might change, but what you can learn from being on the trail and being out in nature, that did not change. Um, so like a lot of that first part of the book, you know, that whole idea of why, why you hike, that didn't change. So that's what, that was my takeaway from, from this. I think 
maybe for me was, you know, we got, we covered the park pretty completely during the, the years we did the first edition. And, uh, you know, we, we hiked those 62 trails and, and uh, I got the feeling that we knew the Adirondacks, we're getting to know the Adirondacks pretty well. But then for this mm. edition, there's so much there, was, there were new trails, there were new parts that we hadn't, knew nothing at all about. And it was, it was always a surprise to see, wow, hey, this, that was a great hike. I'm, how did we not know about that? But right. uh, uh, it's, it's so, and of course it's fun to, to learn something and to have something, uh, a surprise like that. Yeah. yeah, I guess I just want to tell people, you know, not to be afraid to give it a try. And if you've never been on the trail, hopefully this book will be a support and a companion for you. And you can always reach out to us. We love to talk to people. And, sure, good, idea. Um, good one. Yeah, and um, our book is available at Brooks um, Store, Grass River Outfitters. It's available at Tawny. Um, it, I think it's going to be soon available at the Children's Museum. It's available on the Big Spoon website. Um, it's available, uh, I'm sure, University Bookstore and I, maybe at Kinney's, we think. I don't know. Kinney's. I don't know. So quite a few places. Or right through the Adirondack Mountain Club website as well. And once our renovations are done here, it's going to be in our North Country collection. So we'll have yeah. it here. Thank you very much for your donation you. of the book. And, and, you know, uh, actually, I was joking with Sarah uh, Sachs uh, about uh, the fact that we need to get a cover on it because I have been utilizing it and reading it for this, preparing, and then just generally, I had, like I said, taking it on the trail with me. And I says, we want to, this, the, when people finally get their hands on it, it's going to be a well-worn book because it's been, it's, been, it's been really fantastic. Um, thank you both so much for, for taking the time to... to be here to, um, to to talk with me and, and to talk with our, our patrons and the people that have been able to kind of, uh, you know, ask questions and get these live responses. Uh, it's been, you know, as always, kind of great seeing you guys. And um, on the trail. I, I look forward to, yeah, well, I look forward to once our doors are open, uh, and I've said this with previous interviews, uh, have the two of you here and kind of do, you know, another conversation with an, with an audience, you know, we're, we're going to have this magazine. It's going to be to great to have maps you here. And everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it'll be a real display. We'll make a display of it, but thank you so much. And thank everybody for, uh, for tuning in and for your questions and for spending your evening with us. And we hope to see you all soon. I'm watching the Facebook page. It should have stopped. <laughs> I think it stops. It's flashing live. See, this is this is where this is recording in our top. That you're still recording. Ours is still recording, um, but.